This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the Edmonton Oilers prospects, all 21 of them that were selected for the camp in the downtown community arena, have hit the ice, have gotten some time, have gotten to meet some fans, have spoke to the media, and now, of course, we have what is probably the biggest storyline to come out of the development camp, other than barring any godforsaken injuries at this point. The biggest storyline is, of course, the choice that Philip Broberg will make between going back to Sweden and, of course, going back to where his rights are held in the OHL with Hamilton. That's not going back, but going there for the first time. So there's a couple of choices on the board for Philip Broberg, and I think they're very good choices, if I do say so myself. Neither one's a bad choice if you're Philip Broberg, but for the Oilers, there's a couple of aspects that both present that maybe one is good one is bad one is great one is okay kind of deal and you look at this you got to go over to his stuff in the AIK of course he's played in the Alex fan and he's scheduled to play in the SHL this upcoming year with Skella Freda I'm terribly sorry if I mispronounced that to the Sweden fans or anyone tuning in that has a clue how to pronounce it it's been a long day and I hope to get the rest of it right today AIK in the SHL that's where his rights are held in the Swedish Hockey League next year and then you've got Hamilton so just to break down what he's done in Sweden for the past few years in the super elite the junior under 20 he had eight points in eight games, two goals, six assists in 2018-2019. Not a bad showing. Remember, very good skater, definitely able to open up ice. And at that age, maybe a little bit of a game changer to be such a good skater in comparison to a lot of younger players, especially if you're collapsing D-men who are scared of you because you're six foot three and you're skating faster than they could imagine to skate by the time they're 32 kind of deal. And then in the Elsven scan, I'm Again, hoping I'm getting it right. 41 games played, 9 points, a minus 1 rating. So for a defenseman at Proberg being 18 years old, not a bad go. He just literally is about to turn 18. Tomorrow is his birthday, June 25th, 2001, which probably actually according to how this works in Sweden time, he's already 18. So there you go. That's... The message right there for Broberg, an 18-year-old defenseman suiting up on his 18th birthday per se for the Edmonton Oilers in his first action as a member of the team. So that's, uh, that's a little breakdown of where we are at with Philip Broberg for the past year. Now the big thing here with Broberg, the U18 junior team that he was on, 14 points in 17 games. He was an absolute force there as well. And you just have to sit here. Okay, now you're Ken Holland looking to play this right and if you're going to play it right you have two clear choices you have him transition to the North American game this year and play against kids his own age or you have him sorry cats are about to scrap behind the TV so hold on here or you have him transition back to Sweden to keep playing a men's game and ensure that maturity level raises year over year for say two years that's the beautiful part about this and especially if you have him over in Sweden next year, you can bring him to Baker's, Bakersfield the year after. That's the thing there. That's the path you got to follow for Philip Broberg. As you look at it, okay, if he goes to Sweden, he plays a year. What's the pros and cons there? He plays a year in Sweden. He gets to play with men. He gets to play in a very competitive European league, one of the best in the league, right? The Liga in Finland is very good. KHL is obviously whatever you want to call it. And he, then you have the Swedish Elite League, which is very, very highly touted for who's come out of there over the past 20, 25 years, that's for sure. So, okay. The pros, like I said, maturity, playing with pro players, playing with older players. But the con, the big con to having Philip Broberg in Sweden next year is the fact that he's still playing that European-style game. And I don't, I don't know if the ice rink, hold on, let me see what... Uh, SHL rink dimensions if I can find it to NHL comparison because that's one thing I should have tried to find ice hockey rink uh, NHL size I want to know if the SHL is using NHL size at this point dimensions lines creases zones uh, boards see also 
nothing on Wikipedia, of course not the most useless, useless thing in the world. Anyway, that's all right. So, like I said, right, even, even if Philip Broberg's n not playing on NHL ice in Europe, it's still a European style game. We want him adjusted as a six foot three defenseman as he adds pounds to his frame in a North American style game. Ideally, this is not this is not the path you have to go. Remember, he's 18. You can sit here and say, ah, he's good to develop a year. And a year in Europe, at worst, develops his skills, gets more comfortable on his feet, gets more comfortable in a men's game. And that's exactly the biggest pro right there in the Europe situation is you have him in a men's game. And that's if you're the Oilers and you want to go that route, he's obviously going to step into a men's game the next year in the Bakersfield system. Well, okay, bang, right there, no problem. You've got him in Sweden, developing in a men's game, comes over to the AHL, and that's where the beauty happens. If you go that route, the AHL the next year, he plays in a men's game, right? I mean, ba Bakersfield is still a younger team, but in terms of everything overall, the AHL is a lot more men's game than, say, the CHL or even the well, any other junior league, so right there right it's a very clear thing and especially the benefit there is you're playing against former and current NHL players who are roster bumps up and down given injuries that's the thing so you go Sweden one year pro mature skill development three things then you go into a men's game in Bakersfield for a year year and a half and suddenly you've got yourself two and a half years of development of Philip Roberg and now you can sit there and say okay this is what he is can we use it on the current NHL roster now? Do we need to refine two or three things, finish off the year, bring them up at the start of next year, right? Is this a two and a half year project? Is this a three year project? I think that's the question the Oilers have to ask themselves if they go the Sweden route. Zap, please come here. Please stop scratching. All right, guys. You know, the star of the channel can't be ignored for too long. I mean, Robert, there we go. Miss Zap's got to come say hi. Anyway, you look at that, right? That's that's the that's the Sweden Bakersfield combo. Now, if you go to the OHL Hamilton Bulldogs and come that route, you've probably got him playing there for two years, maybe one year, then to Bakersfield for two. But definitely, if you go through the style of the OHL, you ask yourself: not necessarily is it a two-year project two and a half three year you almost immediately have to say it's a three-year project because if you're coming from Sweden you have to adapt to the North American style game you have to adapt to the rink you have to adapt to everything the pressure and the stuff that comes with it and as Philip Roberg's probably figured out today the Edmonton Oilers media once you get to the end of the line in Edmonton isn't exactly the easiest to deal with when it comes to what's being thrown out there about yourself so if you can get yourself some headline experience via the OHL in Hamilton, which is a good market, and then you go via the AHL Bakersfield Condors, who just keep growing up more and more every year, and you go there for two years, and then you jump up to the NHL game, then you should be more prepared as a pro. There again, that's the word, right? The path to being a pro, and that's the problem. If you don't have them develop in Sweden and Bakersfield, you have to develop them as a prospect amongst his junior competitors, for a year which stints the pro development but that's not necessarily a bad thing right this is like I said this is not a two-year project this is not a two and a half year project this is definitely a three-year project it's just a matter of if you go the Sweden route to the AHL and then the next season you know what you have in them by a year and a half in Bakersfield barring no injuries and suddenly that's when you can start making the decision the decision obviously doesn't have to be, hey, two and a half years is up. He has to play in the NHL today. No, that's that's not what the decision has to be. The decision has to be as simple as, okay, he's ready. Let's refine this three-year project. Bingo, start him that next year. And suddenly we're talking about the year after, or the year Seattle comes into the league. We've got ourselves an NHL top four defenseman out of the minor league system. That's the top end potential for his first year if given the right development there's two ways to go about it you go the pro route in sweden then through bakersfield and mature 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 or you have him develop confidence through the ohl ahl route there's two ways to go about it 
And the OHL route, of course, is about building that pro caricature in, well, North America fully. That's what it's fully about. Or you go the development of a man's game all the way through for Philip Roberg. Guys, I can talk about it a million ways to Sunday, but I need to know, what are your thoughts on the best development path for Philip Broberg at this point? We've seen him for a day. That's it. We only have a day to judge what he can do. But what do you think? What is the best path? Let me know in the comments. We haven't really talked about it. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. I'm Tyson, this is Stolony TV. I will catch you in the next one.